Hi there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Lee. I'm here. Stella's here. It's a new year. I hope you're doing well. You look good. Welcome back and you saw the title. You know what we're doing today. I'm going to use my light box to turn a photograph into a drawing and then I'm going to take that drawing and turn it into a mixed media artwork using watercolor, colored pencils, and more. That sounds like something you're interested in. Stick around. We're getting started right now. My apologies. Real quick. Duke said he felt left out. Duke is here too. A few tips to start you off. This is my photo reference. I printed it out on a regular printer piece of paper. One thing you might want to do different in this artwork piece than we have done in other pieces where I just recommend using sketching paper or even just regular printer paper, because we're going to be putting paint and other materials on our drawing, you'll want to have a thicker, better quality paper. So I would recommend something like watercolor paper or mixed media paper. It is going to be a little bit thicker, so you might struggle a little bit more to see your drawing through the paper if it is super thick. Test it out first. Just, you know, put one on top of the other, turn on your light box, see if you can see your photograph underneath the paper that you have chosen. But a regular watercolor type paper should be definitely good enough to do this artwork on. if your reference photo has parts that are a little bit too dark to see. I have this problem with the photo I picked. As you can see, some areas I was able to get really good detail, but on that, but on one side of the paper, I had trouble seeing. So this might be a problem depending on what photos you choose to use with your light box. One thing you can do is just lift up the paper and kind of get a look. The other thing you can do is print out another reference photo and put that next to your light box and use that to help you get those areas where you can't really see as well. That is a downfall of the light box. Just sometimes you just can't see everything quite as well as you want to. So you just need to use other methods to get the best drawing you can possibly get. Getting all the information you need into your drawing will help your painting later on. Once you're happy with your drawing, it's time to do the watercolor. I'm gonna take the light box away and put my paper on my desk. I'm gonna tape it down a little bit just so it doesn't shift around. And with watercolor, a lot of times the paper will like bubble up and so that just kind of keeps it flat. So I've got my watercolor sets, I've got my paint brushes, I've got my water, that's pretty much all you'll need. I have a couple different watercolor sets. 
I have a Daniel Smith pan watercolor set. I have a Sennelier pan watercolor set, and then I have a second um, bunch of Daniel Smith colors. And I did another video last year that I will link above that goes through the watercolors and swatches the colors. So if you're interested in that, you can go check out that video. But for this artwork, you can use whatever watercolors you might have on hand. They sell um, some decent ones even at Walmart. You can go to Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any craft store, any art store. It really depends. If you want to get a good set, you know, I recommend both of these. They're both pretty good. If you want to get a cheap set, those will also work just as fine. You do not need to go out and spend a lot of money in order to make a nice looking artwork. So all we're going to be doing here is just filling in the areas on the drawing with the colors we want to use for watercolor. You might notice that in certain areas I put down a wash of water first like for the background and that is because if I put down water first and then put my paint on top of that it helps the paint to flow across the area much better than if I were to just go on dry paper with my watercolor paint. So pretty much this part of the video I'm going to be painting with my watercolors filling in all the colors I want to use. You'll see me going over some areas a couple different times, either with the same color to darken it or with a new color to give it a little more depth or change the color slightly. And that is what you can do as well. If you're doing this, start out with just very light colors. You can build them up over a couple different layers. I wouldn't go too many um, because then they start to get muddy, but one or two layers of color can give you a nice effect. Watercolors are going to dry lighter than they are when they're wet, so just remember that. If it looks a little bit washed out once it's dried, that's what watercolor does, so you'll just have to go over those areas a little bit with another layer of color. And later on in the video, I'll show you another thing we can do to help bring those colors out and make them more vivid. <laughs>
For this next part of the video, we're going to put the watercolors away and then we're going to turn to colored pencils. These are my Luminance colored pencils. It's a box set from Karandash and they pretty much have every color you could possibly want to use and these are great colored pencils. However, like I said before with the watercolors, you do not need fancy colored pencils. There are Prismacolor, there are Heck, Crayola, Hobby Lobby, and Michaels both have store brands that are fairly inexpensive, so you can get colored pencils at all different price points. I am using regular colored pencils here, not watercolor colored pencils. Now, you might be thinking at this point, I just spent all that time doing a watercolor painting. Why in the world would I want to cover it all up with colored pencils? Well, you do not have to do it this way. This is just an optional way to finish out this artwork. However, this is a technique that many artists use. Why do we do this? Well, the reason for the two-step process is because if you were to just use colored pencils on the paper, you would have a lot more difficulty covering up the white of the paper. And this is a way to make it so that you have a base of color and then you can go in with your colored pencils and add details. You can smooth out areas. You can, um, you know, basically just use your creativity to make the finished artwork look exactly how you want it to. Many artists who use this technique will either start with watercolors or with some sort of marker to lay down a first layer of color. And then once that is complete, then you go into your artwork with your colored pencils and just use the colored pencils on any areas you would like to change detail, add to, define, all of those types of things. So that's why this technique is used. You do not have to cover your whole drawing with colored pencil. You'll notice that in my final artwork that I did here, I did not cover everything. I didn't touch the background with the colored pencils. And for the most part, I pretty much left all the flowers alone, the ones that are around her hair. I didn't really go into that area with the colored pencils. I left it very loose and watercolory because I like the way it looked and I like the contrast with her face. So those decisions are definitely up to you as the artist how you want to use your materials and what you prefer as a finished artwork. So for this part of the video, I'm going to go through, I'm going to use my colored pencils and I'm going to add to and define this artwork using the different colored pencil colors. One tip I can tell you is that for the most part, you're going to want to frequently sharpen your colored pencils. Having a sharp point is going to definitely help you be more precise and give you a better look. And then in larger areas, it might 
might be helpful to turn your colored pencil a little bit on its side or to go over the larger areas using a circular motion rather than um, kind of scratching back and forth because that will leave a lot more visible lines and if you go in a circular motion and then go over it again because with colored pencils you can layer over other colors or the same color several times to get a nice finish and that's kind of what this technique is for is to give you the finish that you're looking for on your artwork so if you use a circular motion rather than an up and down or side to side motion you will get a much better coverage and it will be much easier to get a smooth even coverage with the colored pencils
you would like to try the ink splatter, then just cover any parts of your artwork that you don't want to get the ink on. I just used a piece of paper to cover her face. Take some liquid ink on one brush, and if you need to put it in water or something to make it even more liquidy, you can. And then just tap it against another brush to get the splatter effect. And you can do this using one color or many colors. I used white, red, gold, and black ink. 